We then made little sketches in which uh, people could gossip about Ashley and explain why they possibly could dislike her or, or what the source of the conflict is with that person. So doing it in sketches allowed for it to be more dynamic and for the children to interact with <laughs> Previously, every child was asked to create a character, an alter ego. We wanted to further enhance the experience by creating relationships between these characters. We used a game called the string game. Essentially, all that is needed is a long ball of string. We started off by giving a single child the ball of string, and that child would then explain the characteristics of their character. For example, my name is Ashley. I am very rich and an heiress who is unliked in the house. That child would hold on to the end of the string and throw the ball to another child and explain a relationship that they would share. For example, that is Winky D and he is my secret lover. The receiving child would then explain his character. I am Winky D and I am a rapper, for example. After doing this, he would then pass the ball on to another character and explain their relationship. For example, that is Samantha and we are sworn enemies because she has stolen my money. And this would continue until hopefully we would have a healthy web of relationships, ensuring that at least every child has two or three relationships with three different characters. After this is all done, we then reverse the system, asking the children to try and recall what relationships they share. What is specifically good about this game is the fact that it gives you a visual aid to see exactly who shares a relationship with whom and hopefully trying to remember what that relationship is. And it also allows you to identify where children might have been excluded and then encouraged to include them into the game. In this session, we played a game called The Mish. And in this game, we give the children a setting and they create their own scenario. How this game works is that there must be three characters in that setting at all times. The children must then interact with each other and at any given time, when they might feel they are exhausted, they are free to exit. On exiting, they are allowed to tap at random any other character that is not in the setting at that time. That character must then enter the scenario and take up the position of the person who has just exited, however maintaining their own character. This allows for great movement and great interaction and therefore we get to see how the different relationships develop. It also allows for children not to stay in the setting for too long and dominate the session. There's an extra element to this game, however, and that is called the wild card. Before the whole session starts, or the whole game starts, a single child will be nominated as the wild card, and that character is allowed to enter and exit at any time, as he or she pleases. Sometimes just to give support, and sometimes just to add an extra twist to the activities happening in that setting. We also used this moment and this technique um, to further enhance everything that had to do with the creation of the story inside the big sister house. So the different characters interact and they develop in a playful way, in an uh, improvisation way, the entire interaction that exists between them. Who is friendly to whom, who is whose friend, uh, and this will form the basis of the uh, same scenes inside the big sister house. 
So it's a good way of having children elaborate a story in a not necessarily very formal or structured way, but will still give the results that you're hoping for. Also note that the children here still use minimum props, but those are necessary to stimulate the creativity of the children and create their own character and enter into it more easily. Another aspect that we wanted to work on with the children before starting the shoot of this short movie is the importance of angles and editing. Now, we wanted to make the difference here between what happens in theatre settings where you play one scene uh, continuously and filming where you have to repeat several lines and um, they will be uh, edited in different ways with zooms of different people. So we did one continuous shot as if it was a theatre setting um, where everything was very static and then we went into uh, the same scene but using angles and zooms into people so that the interaction between the children becomes a lot more dynamic and the viewer has the impression um, that the scene is more uh, happening. We wanted to explain to the children an element of editing as well. And so therefore, in this session, what we did was take them out and try to show them that television audiences get a different view from theatre audiences. In that, where we normally were using a static camera and capturing all activity, we could actually make it more diverse by changing angles, by zooming, and eventually editing it ultimately pasting different images together to create a more dynamic picture. The second example that we used to illustrate the importance of editing is a telephone scene where we would film two people on the cell phone who would be um, talking about a specific topic. Now there we could show that we first have a zoom of this person, then we would just turn around and film the other person, um, but in the total end of it, it would make a fluid con a telephone conversation. Hello? Yeah, de detective. Eh, yeah, uh, and Jean. Ah. And I'm going to go to Ashley. Eh, I'm going to go to Ashley. Ah, I'm going to go to Ashley. But I'm going to go to Ashley. 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 I'm going to go to Ashley.